Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments daily with the Master, looking at God's Word. Thank you for being with me. Well, we started our series on Monday on leadership, and the first thing we noticed was the word led is in the word leadership. So many people who are in positions of influence are more ledership than leadership. Leadership causes the organization, the institutions, the family, the nation to drop like a lead balloon. Can you think of anyone who is in a position of power in this country who is led the ship, that our health has gone down, our economy has gone down, our civility has gone down because of this person's leadership. Can you think of anyone like that in, who's in a high place? Which proves the point that just because you have a title and just because you have an office does not make you a leader. You are more a leader. You are like lead. You bring things down. Leadership is influence. It's not office. It's not titles. It's influence. Whoever influences you is leading you. Whoever you influence is you're in leading them. And God wants us to be all leaders because we're the salt of the earth. We're the light of the world. We're the leaven in the dough. We're supposed to make a difference in the world. And we make a difference by influencing people. That's what leadership is. And we've talked about some of the various aspects of leadership. For example, leaders are people who are courageous. Leaders are people who are thinkers. Leaders are people who are determined. And then here's something else about leadership and that leaders are people who, men and women, who set goals. Set goals. If you aim at nothing, that's what you're going to get. Leaders set goals. And the Bible stresses the importance of doing that in Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 27, where it reads, If your goals are good, you will be respected. But if you're looking for trouble, that is what you will get. In other words, you always move in the direction that you're thinking about, you're dreaming about. That's the direction your life will move in. He says, if your goals are good, and a goal is simply where you decide to go in life. And if where you decide to go, those goals are good, then the end result of having good goals is you will be respected. Con con conversely, if you don't have the right goals, guess what you're doing? You're looking for something. Whether you realize it or not, you're looking for trouble. Goal setting is critical for leaders. It it's not wishful thinking. It's not daydreaming. It's, it's imagining a preferable future for your life or maybe for your family, or maybe for your organization. It is, this is where I want to be in the future. Every time you get on an airplane, you've got to decide. Uh, when you go, they will ask you, where, where do you want to go? Where, what, do you, where do you have tickets to go? And if you just say, well, anywhere, well, they'll look at you like, is something wrong with you? You have a specific plan you get going to get on, because that specific plan is going to take you to a specific destination. And once you know where that destination is, perhaps one of the great diseases in our society today is so many people just drift through life. You have two options in life. You will either drift or you will dream. And God is not calling for us just to drift. God is calling for us to dream, to set goals. If you don't have a goal for your life, other people will. When you don't have a goal, watch what happens. When you are not focused, notice how much you will be influenced by other people. When you don't have a goal for your life, other people will have a goal for your life, and usually where they want to take your life is not where you should be. So you have to set some goals for yourself. You know, you know on an airplane, sometimes 
when the plane is having a problem because for whatever reason uh, uh, that uh, you cannot land the plane, the, the pilot will say that we cannot land the plane right now, so we are in a holding pattern, and the plane will just stay there kind of hovering the airport until they get clearance from the tower that they can land. They, they're in a holding pattern, which means they're just flying around the same place and they're not going anywhere, just wasting a lot of energy, but they're not making any progress. And so many lives are just like that. You, they're, you're in a holding pattern. Are you in a holding pattern? How long have you been in a holding pattern? If you're tired of being in that holding pattern, then you've got to set some goals for your life. The Word of God says if your goals are good, you will be respected. How you determine as a leader what constitutes good goals. Here are seven characteristics of good goals. You need to write this down, review this, put this in a conspicuous place. And when you get these words, when you get the Word of God, you look at that word and you pray about it. You say, God, what's on this page? Take it off the page and put it in my heart and get my life to moving on the basis of what I am learning from your word, God. And here are seven characteristics of people who are goal setters. Characteristic number one, and that is the goals you have, one, are challenging. You need something to push you, to make you stretch. Make sure that whatever goal you have, that is not too low, but it's something worth acquiring, worth seeking. Goals are goals that you, when there's good goals, it says when you have a good goal, you will be respected. A good goal is always a goal that challenges you. Secondly, a good goal is something that is measurable. It's measurable, it's not vague. It's, it's not abstract, it's something measurable. Let's say, for example, you say, I have a goal to get in shape. Well, what do you mean by that? You gotta be very specific and measurable. Does getting in shape mean, okay, I'm gonna stop smoking, I'm going to walk four days a week uh, for a mile. That's something specific. I'm going to lose 10 pounds. You have to be very specific when it comes to a goal. If something's going to stretch you, because that stretching is going to motivate you. It's going to stretch you, something that is measurable, and then it's something that is achievable. It's achievable. Some of the goals that we have are so unrealistic and when it doesn't happen then we get discouraged when we shouldn't have been seeking that goal in the first place the purpose of a goal is to stretch you it's not to stress you so you have to make sure that it is something that you can achieve you say you know what this is achievable because goals are challenging goals are measurable goals are achievable and then here put this down goals have deadlines goals have deadlines. In other words, if you have a goal and you can't say it's measurable, I'm going to lose, say for example, 10 pounds. And then you say, I'm going to lose these 10 pounds by, oh, 10 weeks, eight weeks. You have deadlines. You've set a deadline. If you don't have a deadline, it's not a goal. Another characteristic of a goal. Not only is it challenging, not only is it measurable, not only is it achievable, not only does it have a deadline, but good goals are written down. You write them down. You write them down. You've got to take, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I cannot emphasize how important it is to write down your goals and put those up in a conspicuous place because good goals are challenging. They are measurable. They are achievable. They have deadlines they are written down and then they're flexible you never want know what may happen where you write one thing down, I'm gonna do this but then something happens which means you have to adjust a little bit and that's okay because good goals are goals that are flexible and then good goals are goals that are shared which is to say if you have a goal, you got to find someone else who's going to hold you accountable. You have an accountability partner. I have a um, personal trainer, and the personal trainer works me out and checks out my weight and all these other things. And the reason I have a personal trainer is not because I don't exercise, but I need somebody to hold Kevin Cosby accountable. And so 
do you. If you are aiming at nothing, that's probably what you're going to get. If you're in a holding pattern, wasting a lot of energy and never landing, it's probably because you don't have any goals. And when you don't set goals for your life, other people will, and they will take your life in a direction that you do not want it to go. God wants you as a leader to be a thinker. God wants you as a leader to be courageous. God wants you as a leader to be determined. God wants you right now to start having goals. Don't procrastinate about this. Life's too short. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. You make sure you start planning some great goals because nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. God, the poet said, I can't, but you never said I could. God, you can, and you always said you would. Listen, your life can get better. You take these powerful points to ponder in the name of Jesus. I don't know who I'm talking to, but in my spirit right now, I believe with all my heart, there is somebody right now who is on the verge of giving up. You are so, so depressed and you are so, so discouraged. In the name of Jesus, hear me. God's got a plan and God's got a purpose for your life. You can turn this thing around right now get started right now get started let November and December be the last two months that's going to be your turnaround month two months so that when 2021 comes up when 2021 comes up you'll be you'll be quoting Psalms 121 I lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. We've been in our life so passive, sometimes just waiting for things to happen instead of making things to happen. Please, Lord, fire up in us what we used to have that leadership, that passion, Lord. Oh God, thank you that you can bless our neighbor and you can bless us. You've got enough blessings for all your people because you are the God of abundance. I pray, oh Lord, that every discouraged heart might find hope and encouragement in your word. We claim it, we claim a new day for the people of God. May they say it right now, a new day. In the name of Jesus, for me, for my family, for my situation, let them say that. Let them decree it. Let them declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Let me tell you something. I believe the devil didn't want you to hear this powerful point to ponder today. I don't know. He, he, the devil didn't want you to hear it, but it's too late. You got it. It's in your spirit. A new day is coming. And do me a favor. When you get a powerful point to ponder that has changed your life, please contact us here at St. Stephen Baptist Church at ssclife.org so I can tell other people because God blessed you. I want to share with other people what God is doing in your life because God blessed you so you can be a blessing to someone else. Let's get through COVID-19 and difficult times together as we share with each other what God is doing. God bless you real good. I appreciate you. And uh, in closing, as we always do, let's close with our salutation. Uh, in COVID-19, let's covenant to do what? Stay safe, stay sane, stay at home if you can. And hey, it's Friday. We got a few more days. Go out to vote and let's end this voting cycle on November the 3rd with everybody out there voting for change. God bless you. Love you so much. I'll see you Saturday.